Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and today I want to talk about mean snakes and let me tell you, I've had some mean snakes in the past. As a matter of fact, I have a mean snake here in my collection and for some reason I just can't tame that snake down and today I want to show you that snake and we're going to try to tame him down a little bit. I'm going to put him around my neck and try to talk about mean snakes with that snake wrapped around my neck and I actually tried it yesterday and it didn't work very good. I was trying to do a video on my rat. I thought, oh yeah, yeah, I'll take the snake out, put it around my neck, and I'll do a video on rats. And let me tell you, that snake was going wild. It was biting the camera. It was biting my hand. It was biting everything. It's like, all right, this isn't going to work. I put the snake away, and I pretty much started over. So today, I want to focus just on that snake and on what we call mean snake. Some people say that, you know, there's not really a mean snake. You can tame them down, and sometimes I beg to differ. I think there's some mean snakes, and I'm going to show you one that I just can't tame down. Down. And then at the end of this video, I want to show you my frog collection, give you a quick update on my Pac-Man frogs and my pixie frog. So let's jump right in and let's see this snake. All right, so this snake lives in my ARS rack here. This is my grow out rack and she, I tried to breed her last year and she didn't actually lay any eggs. So I'm going to try to breed her again, maybe next year. I gave her this year off and she pretty much went on a fast. And the funny thing about this snake is if you look at her for too long, she will eventually give you the evil eye and she will start snapping at you and biting at you. And most people say, you know, ball pythons are never really aggressive, but this one seems to be an extreme, uh, kind of an outlier as far as ball pythons. And she kind of looks like maybe she's going into a shed maybe, well, you can see her eyes are maybe just a clown up just a little bit. She may be going into a shed and you know that always makes them a little bit grumpier. This is actually, uh, it's a uh, pastel spider, possible yellow belly, possible het pied female from 2015 and she's been on live rats. She fasted for almost a year and then I realized that after all that time she decided to eat some live rats and that's uh, the only thing she'll eat. I've tried everything else, African soft furs, fresh killed and frozen and frozen rats and frozen mice. The only thing she'll take is live rats which is pretty amazing. She's got pretty much honed in on only one thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this snake out, put her on my neck, and let's talk about mean snakes. Alright guys, take a look at this snake. <laughs> this is a little snapper. This, this girl will definitely snap at you pretty much <laughs> all the time. She is pretty crazy. Let's see if I can actually put this snake around my neck. <laughs> this is without taking a bite on my ear. <laughs> well, this is This will be kind of interesting to see if I can do this. And this, this ball python actually has some history behind her. Let me see uh, if I can do this. She's kind of in flight mode right now. All right, all right. She's kind of wrapped around me here a little bit. All right, <laughs> the good thing about ball pythons is when they get scared, they tend to hide and they don't really tend to bite, which is a good thing. Some snakes, when they get stressed out, they tend to bite instead of hide, which is a good thing, uh, which is not really a good thing. You don't want a snake to bite. You want a snake to hide instead of bite. So there's kind of a backstory behind this snake. When I first got this snake, I was actually, I actually ordered this, this rack, this ARS rack. It was my very first rack and I didn't really have room for the snake and I'm kind of keeping an eye on the snake to see where the head is to make sure it doesn't come out and bite me on the ear. I might have a snake earring by the end of this episode. <laughs> but anyway, so I didn't have the ARS rack and I got it in the mail. It was such a good deal. I found, found it on Morph Market and I was like, oh yeah, that snake is awesome. And this actually has the spider gene in it. I didn't know anything about the spider gene controversy at the time. I was just looking at the colors and patterns. I was brand new to ball pythons. I thought, okay, I'll order the snake, and I was tr trying, to, trying to time it to where the snake would arrive the same time as my snake rack. And I come to find out the snake arrived like two days before the rack got here. Which is not a good thing, because <laughs> I had the snake, and I didn't know what to do with it. So, you know, not really knowing anything about snakes or ball pythons or anything, I put it in a glass aquarium 
in the kitchen and then I made this little hide out of cardboard and that snake actually I put it in there and we were walking around you know it was in there for like two days and I was walking around and it was it, what happened was the snake crawled out of the hide and it sat on top of the hide and it was kind of eyeing us and every time we get close to the tank that, that snake would take a bite at us and I think what really happened is the snake associated the 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 trauma of being shipped you know through the mail with with me because you know I basically took it out of the box and then put it where it could see me and I think that's a reason that a lot of people say that you really shouldn't handle a snake after you get it for a couple weeks so it kind of forgets about the whole trauma of the shipping and it doesn't associate you with the trauma of the shipping and this girl looks like she's still kind of hiding <laughs> kind of no danger right now which is a good thing and I'm convinced that you can eventually tame any snake and I don't think that there's a snake out there that can't be tamed and I've seen some people actually tame venomous snakes which is pretty amazing you think about a venomous snake like a rattlesnake and you get close to a rattlesnake and you hear the rattle and it's like you know it's it's pretty terrifying and I've seen people actually tame venomous snakes which is which is pretty amazing I'd say probably the venomous are probably the hardest to tame and even with the venomous I definitely wouldn't put a venomous around my neck no matter how tame that snake is you always have to have a respect for a venomous snake you don't really want to you know relax keep you know put your guard down and take a chance of getting bit you know a venomous snake it's usually once and game over this snake is not venomous so this snake can bite me as many times as it wants and I'm not gonna <laughs> I might bleed a little bit but I'm not gonna die and I won't have anything that is really severe so I kinda know my snakes you know as far as you know you definitely don't want to get bit by like a large 70 pound reticulated python it can do some serious damage but a small snake like this it's you know it can it can you know make you bleed a little but it's not really going to be life threatening so there's not a whole lot of danger here besides you know taking a little bite and breaking the skin I would say uh, so so anyway I actually had another snake that was extremely aggressive early on in my snake keeping career and that was an Australia Woma Python and let me tell you I almost got out of snake keeping because of that one snake and what happened was is I actually had it shipped to my house which was a big mistake yeah I'm telling you if you have snakes shipped through the mail I would highly recommend that you keep them at the post office have them hold them at the post office and not have them bouncing around in the back of a delivery truck with the guy you know sorting through packages bouncing them around let me tell you the guy that shipped me that that Woma Python he didn't pack it correctly and it got extremely beat up and had bruises all over his body when I got it when I took that snake out it was incredibly beat up and I actually put it first in a glass aquarium and it was terrifying let me tell you that was a full-grown Woma you know big it's probably you know that big around it was a really big snake and every time I came in the room they would come out and strike the glass aquarium so hard I thought it was literally gonna break the glass and sometimes it would strike the glass so many times I just had to leave the room because it was terrifying coming into my snake room and then it was like it was like the very first year I got into snakes and I had some king snakes and a few ball pythons and that woma python and when I got that woma python let me tell you I started rethinking keeping snakes I'm like what in the world am I doing am I crazy keeping these snakes in my basement this is this is really insane and then I actually tame that snake I think I think the proper word is charmed because it, it converted from an extremely aggressive snake to an, an extremely friendly snake and really the trick was is getting that snake out and of the glass aquarium and putting them in these gray tubs and let me tell you it was night and day with within a week in the gray tubs it was totally tamed down and I would say you know even after it was tamed I still kind of had some hesitation you know I, I was used to it really striking me and putting fear in me <laughs> and then you know you, you uh, it, it was almost all I could do to put it around my neck and trust it like I'm trusting this one and, and the thing is is you know especially when you're a new snake keeper the the biggest thing you're afraid of is getting 
bit. And let me tell you, it's, you can watch some YouTube videos. You know, some of the old ones, uh, I've, I've watched some really old series on snake keeping and breeding and people getting bit all the time, kind of making a joke out of it. And I don't think that's really the best way to, to teach people that it's okay to get bit. But and let me tell you, it works and it reduced my fear of getting bit. So, so now it's like bit, getting bit is really no, no big deal. But it still hurts, <laughs> you still lose a little blood. But uh, this, this snake here, it looks like she's kind of relaxed a little bit. And if I'm moving my hand around, kind of talking like this, a lot of times that's when I got bit yesterday as I was moving my hand around and it just started taking bites at me. I got close to the camera, it bit the camera, it was going crazy. And now the second day that I had the snake around my neck, I think it's, it's a little bit more tamed actually. And I, I don't think it takes a whole lot to really build the confidence of a snake if you do it right. And I think a few, maybe a few episodes with this particular snake around my neck and maybe it'll tame down, I don't know. I've had this snake for a couple of years and I've tried a few times and I still get bit by this snake. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. So that's pretty much it on my <laughs> discussion about mean snakes. And you know, I th and, you know, personally, I think you can charm any snake it just takes time and patience and and working with the snake building the confidence with the snake and i think it's really essential to handle that snake and build the confidence and and sometimes it just takes getting bit quite a few times before you actually build the confidence and build the trust with the snake so from here i'm going to put the snake back because i don't want to get bit <laughs> and i want to show you my frog collection let's check that all out all right so if you watched my early videos with my frogs i had had them in different enclosures i actually had them in little glass aquariums with screen tops and i've since moved to all of these exoterra with the open slide <laughs> the swing open doors and these are fantastic i just go in here and spray and i can feed right in here this is my pixie frog and what i want to do is i want to actually take these out and get some better lighting on them so you can see them a little bit better pixie frogs are this is actually a giant pixie frog and they, it's like a bullfrog and it gets incredibly large this this frog is really big and in here i have my adult pac-man that's kind of buried down in the bottom here you can barely even see him <laughs> kind of hiding down in there i'll pull all these out and we can get some better lighting but i've since switched to all of these exoterra tanks and it's fantastic and uh, there's a couple Couple things about these frogs I actually had two more that didn't survive one of them I actually fed too big of a meal I actually fed it a mouse and I think it died because I fed it too big of a meal I just kind of jumped in bought a bunch of frogs and I was checking it out you know just just kind of you know trying it out and seeing you know what works and what doesn't work you definitely can't feed him too much I think that's why he died and then I had another one actually up on top that the, the, the thermostat on my heater went out in here and if they go above 88 degrees these frogs can die from the heat so you definitely don't want them to get too hot and it went up to like 95 and I was, I was glad I didn't lose any one uh, one died and one went off of food and it kind of really scared me and then they all came back on food which is good so I have to really watch the temperature in here so it doesn't get too hot because it can kill your frogs so let me pull these down get some light on them and let's check them out all right so I have some good lighting on this frog now got a couple bright lights on the aquarium here the, and what I do for the screen top is I actually put this aluminum foil underneath I just you know put the the large aluminum foil and stick it right in the it clamps right to the top and that actually what that does is that actually keeps all the humidity and I can just open it up and usually like every other day every day or every other day I just spray it down with a little water give them a little mist and this is what the frog looks like he is a really beautiful frog. This is the giant African pixie frog. And he is just a tiny little baby and he will eat like crazy. He's actually still, he's really pretty friendly. He hasn't really bit me. I've seen some that are pretty aggressive. 
and as long as you kind of handle them and th this is like a regular bullfrog so a bullfrog really likes to be in water and they just they pretty much he'll pretty much just stay in the water all the time and sometimes he'll come out and kind of jump around in the moss what i use is like a this sphagnum moss and then underneath this i use eco earth and i pretty much soak the eco earth i squeeze all the water out and put it down and then i put the sphagnum moss on top and <laughs> look at this guy just kind of hanging out in the water these frogs are awesome pretty low maintenance i have to say i feed them probably twice a week and I just give them some mealworms they're really low maintenance animals all right so this is my pac-man frog if you've never seen a pac-man frog they are really funny really incredible frogs it's a, just a, a plain green pac-man male so this is this is a male and there's males and females you can tell them apart only when they mature and this guy he might bite you if you put your finger in front of him but other than that <laughs> he's pretty friendly he is a really big frog let me show you let me dig him out of the 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 substrate here and he's he's yeah he's a he's a pretty big frog he's, this is probably about as big as the males will get about this big and what i do is I don't have any water in here. You can put water in and they pretty much ignore it. So what I do is once a week, what I do is I give them a swim in some like 90, uh, well, you don't wanna go up to 90. You want some water that is probably uh, not more than probably 82 degrees, 78 to 82. Give them a little swim and some water just to kind of clean off the substrate, the substrate from his skin. And then every day or every other day I go through and I spray them down with a spray bottle and really they breathe through their skin so you're really not supposed to touch them with your hands that much. And if you do touch them with your hands you should follow up and spray them down with a spray bottle. And he's kind of stressed out now because I dug him out of the substrate. Typically they're, uh, 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 you just set them and leave them alone. You don't really mess with Pac-Man frogs. They don't really like to be messed with but they're just it's almost like you know a perfect kind of a pet rock that goes along with all my snakes and everything else they are really low maintenance really cool animals all right so take a look at this one this is an albino pac-man i have albinos that are straight albinos and i also have strawberry albinos and these these are probably some of my favorites some of the most beautiful you know as far as the colors in the intensity, I would say the, the albinos are probably hands down one of my favorite. They're a little more expensive than the green, not too bad. Let me see if I can dig them out. He's growing pretty good from since when I got him. It's, it's, you, you know, it's when, sometimes he gets a little bit chunky and sometimes he's a little bit thinner. And I'd say he's probably a perfect size right now. I've been feeding these guys pretty much mealworms twice a week. They're doing fantastic. All right, so here is my second albino. I dug him out of the substrate. Let's see if we can spray him down a little bit. <laughs> and it, sometimes they get really covered in substrate and you really can't even get the substrate off. In that case, what I typically do is soak them in a little bath water, give them a little bath and soak them and kind of let them swim around. The only thing is you don't want the water too deep because I think they really can't swim. They just kind of sink to the bottom. I've seen videos of people trying to give them baths. And the funny thing is, is sometimes they'll, for whatever reason, they'll just dig all the way down in the substrate and you'll lose them, you'll practically just lose them and you won't be able to even see them in the tank. And it's like you have this empty tank. It's like, where's my frog? And, and sometimes I've actually left the doors, you know, I closed the doors like this and I actually left one open. And I thought, oh, my, my frog got out. <laughs> I'm looking all around the room, looking for my frog, come to find out he's actually buried in the substrate. <laughs> Actually, you know, I dug this one out, but um, it's it's funny how they just bury themselves under there, and for whatever reason, they they go on some kind of a, a burying mode, and then you know, like a week later, they'll just pop out and they'll be jumping around looking for some food. It's pretty crazy. All right, so here is my fifth frog four pac-mans and one pixie frog this happens to be my strawberry albino pac-man frog i really love the strawberry albinos really an awesome 
It's just a different phase of albino. It's a slightly different color than the regular albino. It's really neat. And I actually had two of them and one of them passed away. And then when my some of my Pac-Man, I was really excited about the Pac-Man frogs and getting into them. I was thinking about breeding them and then a couple of them passed away. And then I thought, well, maybe I wanna see if I can actually keep these guys alive before I get any more frogs or really get into breeding. So that's kind of where I'm at now. I don't think I'll get any more frogs and we'll see if I can grow them up successfully and maybe breed them. And at that point, I may expand into more Pac-Mans. All right, so that is the update on my collection of frogs and the discussion about mean snakes. Let me tell you, before you put a snake around your neck like this bamboo ball python, you definitely want to know the snake, the personality of the snake. And I guarantee you, this snake would never bite me. As a matter of fact, I don't think I have any ball pythons that would really bite me except maybe hatchlings that aren't used to being handled that much. All my adults are super friendly and I think that's why ball pythons are the number one pet because you really can't find a really mean ball python. That one is really an exception to the rule. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.